TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Looking good, Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. Get your trading shoes on, boys and girls. We've got something set up that may look good. It may not be good, but we're going to show you what it is. This is the Japanese yen, the third most did you hear the bell <laughs> and the most third of the the euro is uh, dollar is first euro is second the yen is third in the, the uh, dollar uh, forex stuff okay anyway you can see the retracements i wanted to show you this because this was uh, several hours ago we were trading down in here that move was exactly like this one okay your abcd measured right up to here all right and now it's going to back off just a little bit. Now, what we're waiting for and what we're waiting for, boys and girls, is what you're going to see next. And this is where you want to get your trading shoes on because this is may or may not happen, but this is what you live by. And we're very close, like they say, maybe no cigar, but we're about 20 pips away from this number right here. And you got to stop and think if you made a correction like this, and you made a correction like this, which was worth well over $500. If you sell it there at 137.14, uh, you don't have to risk very much. You risk uh, roughly uh, $250 to make $500 or more. And that happens to be a very, very important number. You can see all the ABCDs. This is what I do every single day. Never any difference. Always a tiny bit boring, but always exciting, as we say in the trade. Now, let's talk about the cattle. We had several people ask me about cattle because they don't trade cattle very much. Well, I'm going to bring it up. Today, you'll see after we hit that level at 166, which was, as you look at this, a 1.618 expansion. That's an A, B, C, D now, if you want to be really fun and do the work yourself, count the number of bars from the low to the high and then the pullback to the 61% retracement and see if the number of bars from the low to the high is equal to the ones on the low to the high. Voila, voila, voila. Well, this, this is up well over almost $1,000 this morning, folks. What, whether this will be the one that doesn't work, I don't know. I know one thing, we're not going to lose any money on that. That's for sure. So let's pay attention to that. Uh, our, our, our guest today will be the wolf trader himself, ShaneSmolian.com. Tomorrow we have Stan Harley. On Monday we're going to have uh, Bill Meridian. On Tuesday we're going to have Jeff Huge as our guest coming up. And hopefully on Wednesday we're going to have our good friend uh, Jim Bartoglione of Bart's Charts to talk to us about his work that he's done on the natural gas and I wanted to bring this up to you now I'm not going to steal any of his thunder because he does his own work at Bart's charts and uh, go to that YouTube and see it but uh, there's what he's looking for we've had the pretty good move off the bottom not even made a 382 retracement yet but it's getting close so we want to see what happens when we get to that level folks we're going to change channels a little bit we're going to go to the weather channel because I want to show you a picture of my backyard today Sarah said it was supposed to rain last night when she got up at 5 o'clock. She said, did it rain? I said, no, I didn't hear anything. <laughs> well, it rained all night, but it was frozen rain. This is snow, folks, two inches of snow, the white fluffy stuff. That's right, right, right by our house. So this is really, uh, really quite, quite exciting. No skiing yet, and, a lot of, and, and it's not on the ground, folks. It melted right away. It lasted about a few minutes at two inches uh, when it was still you know right before daybreak and then of course as soon as the sun comes up it melts but that is uh we at 15 years ago uh we were here and we had a six inches of snow on the ground that was a major blizzard uh tucson gets those about once every 30 or 40 years that was the year uh, it shut the whole city down for about a day 
around noon, everything had melted off, but it was uh, it was pretty exciting, you know, during that time. Now, I want to talk to you just a little bit about the stock market, folks, because believe it or not, this stock market is not acting bearish. And let me explain to you why. We're, the last time I saw a price, which was a few minutes ago, we were trading at 1851, I believe, 1851. Folks, that's three points higher than what our FIB number was at 1848 that was hit. Remember, we made a low last night at 1325, uh, 3925. So this, this is where we are so far. Let me get this up here so you can see it. It did exactly what we thought it was going to do, but it's not breaking very much. It really isn't, given the fact that everything in the news is about the two-year Yields being as high as they've been, they're almost at 5%. And now they're talking about 55 or 6 I mean, that's all that's on the news on Bloomberg. And so, boy, when you see all that bad news like that, wow, why isn't this thing breaking? You know, our, our 382 retracement was at 39.51, and we sold it there. It broke down to 39.42 uh, or something like that. It's back to pretty much where we sold it. We're risking only six points on this, above uh, 15 39.58, it would be wrong, but uh, that's what we're that's what we're looking at. All the other trades, the gold is working well. We had a 3.82 retracement in the gold, but let me show you one that is really exciting from my point of view. This is the Treasury bonds. I want to show you because we've made new lows in Treasury bonds by a considerable amount. Let me just get up here to show you where we are. We have broken down here considerably below that number. We got to 122 and change. Remember, we were looking at 123. We rallied to 125. We broke even on that trade. But look at this one, folks. This is the one. This is the big daddy rabbit, folks. This is the one that measures all of the stuff for the credit cards, auto loans, mortgages. And here we are over the – look at this. Last year, there was our high back in March. Look at this. We're sitting right here. At the 78% level, folks, are you ready for this? 115.12. The low has been 115.11. Now, I don't think it's going to turn from here, but there's a possibility that it might. And I say that with tongue in cheek because I don't really know what's really going to happen or not. But all I do know is when we were looking at this in the Treasury bond market with the AI program, and I'm going to talk about that for just a short period of time today this was our forecast today and you'll notice this time frame right here folks these lines are just timing lines and they're basically based on this pattern right here that you see from high to the low happened on this was when this was thursdays okay so this pattern bottomed or topped around this time on tuesday go check it yourself that's all it is. And and all we've done is run all kinds of studies on it, and it shows that, yep, some of the times it works, some of the times it doesn't. So if you get down to this level, and you made new lows on the day right there, right now you're trading just slightly above it, whether that means anything, I don't know. All I'm doing is my job is to, to follow risk control, and that's what I really try to do. So let's take a break. 877-927-6648. There's one line open. If you want to try to get through, so bear with me. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. 
Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating Investors. Free at one eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight internationally at seven two seven eight seven three seven six one eight. Okay, folks, I posted the fifteen minute chart of the Dow Jones Industrial Average mainly for two reasons. As you can see, we're looking at a head and shoulders pattern that did complete. The market came all the way back to this level right here, stopped, and then start to rally again. This rally that you're seeing, this ABCD, was caused by one stock, a stock that was trading at $198 yesterday called uh -oh, Salesforce in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. <laughs> the old cowboy, I tell you. I know it's a computer stock and stuff like that. I don't know if it replaced GE or not. By the way, GE was the last stock of the original Dow Jones Industrials from 1895. That was the last one. It's gone. People don't realize this, but in 1932, 16 of the Dow 30 stocks went bankrupt. And, of course, they bottomed in July on the 8th, as Basil Chapman's always reminds me of affectionately at $32 after being at 386 on September the 3rd, 1929. That was the big crash. And from 42 and change, I believe, was what the final figure was on that day. We went to 40,000, believe it or not, in a period of about 100 years. As you can see, not quite 100 years, about, uh, da, 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 about, know, about 98 years. Okay, now. My, my premise is about the Dow Jones, because it's one stock and it trades for 198 and it opened at 225, that is price weighted, not the capitalization, but the price weighting. And that's why you see these moves. So what I'm doing is I'm watching what the people at CNBC are watching. So when we were hitting this level right here, we were hitting at 39.51 which was a 382 retracement of this whole range that we had here. I posted that just a little while ago to show you what I was looking at. These are things that I'm going to be covering when we're doing the day trading thing on a week from today, well, a week from yesterday, March the 8th, but there it is. This is the same thing I was looking at. Now we went all the way down. We came all the way down to 42, and now we're back to where we were right now. Now we sold this at 51. The high has been 55, so I'm only risking three points on this. If it gets above 55, it's sayonara, and I'm going to wait and see what happens next. My whole thing is I don't care whether it's going to drop 300 points or whatever, but this market is not acting bearish, folks. It flat is not. 
I mean, you've got a whole – if you just turn on Bloomberg, that's all they're talking about. It's the fact that the two-year is almost at 5 percent. And, of course, the 30-year the 30 is trading under that. But they're all sitting right at that number on the on the on the. Uh, let's just get it right up here again to take a look at it. This is the number right here, and I do not have a position in the notes. I do not have a position in the bonds, but I'm looking at this because if this thing does turn from here, and like the boys at Bloomberg said, and the folks that uh, that came on today with, uh, I can't remember the option outfit. Trade what you trade. Uh, I can't remember the fellows that were on right before me. I'm embarrassed to say that, uh, what it happens to be. Uh, it's the option dudes, but they're really good. Anyway, they caught, They were talking about the fact that these 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 averages for the bonds and the notes are setting exactly on the 200-day moving average. I wish Basil Chapman would check in and tell us about that because we've already rallied eight or nine ticks off the bottom. So that's that's what I'm paying attention to today because I, you know, the news is so doggone bearish. The S&P should be down 40 or 50. I mean, last night we went from 39.65 all the way down to 39.22, and we've rallied back 40 handles. Uh, no, not quite 30 handles. So you know, this market, you know, may or may not be acting bearish, but by golly. You know, it's not acting as bearish as it should be. So that's uh, that's what we're paying attention to here uh, today as we're watching these things unfold. There's not been a lot of action going on, but uh, it is if somebody's buying this stuff, but certainly not me. And uh, you know, I'm I'm short, and uh, and I'm only five foot nine. Who knows? I'm just telling you that's what it is. Anyway, back to that uh, trade in the uh, the uh, not in the. <laughs> hold on one second. In the uh, that the Japanese yen, let me get this up here to show you because we missed. I mean, so far we've got as high as uh, 136.98, and we're looking for it to get about 30 pips uh, higher than that. In the uh, Jap, let me get it up here so you folks can uh, just see it. This might be one that we missed because it doesn't quite hit the target. But like when you go to the market, sometimes they're out of food, sometimes they have too much. Anyway, this is what we're waiting for right up here. That's got everything you asked for. You got double ABCDs. Perfect buy here last night, folks. This was worth well over $700, just this little move right here. And uh, we did I happen to be buying that one because it was so perfect. That's why I put all this stuff in here because when it was right there, it was making a perfect – well, let's get up here and look at it again. It was making the exact same pattern that it had been doing before. And that's all I wanted to show you is these markets repeat over and over again. And this is one of the largest of the things that's ever traded. This is the you know, risk on, risk off. This is the Japanese yen versus the dollar. There was a perfect pullback here and a perfect pullback right here. Okay, that came in at the 382 of this number right here. It came in at the 61% retracement of that number right there. And voila, voila, now we're almost ready to make – the larger ABCD all the way up on the upside. So those are a few of the things that we're paying very, very close and close attention to uh, here today. So we're going to find out whether that's it uh, going to be it or not. We'll have to, you know, do you know do one thing at a time to see how things uh, unfold. But the uh, the uh, Japanese yen is still in the area where it could be topping, and we know that it's very, very close. We're only about 35 or 40 pips away, so let's uh, pay attention to that. Now, based on what we're looking at here with the AI folks, we're coming into a very, very uh, critical time right now here uh, in the AI. You're going to be able to see it here very, very shortly. Uh, you'll be able to see it here. Oh, my goodness. We're within about uh, – Oh, very, very close here. We're going to be right in the area in about five or ten minutes. We've got a break coming up. And, of course, we have Shane coming on. But you want to watch it here in the next few minutes because we should be making a bottom. And if we're not below 39.39, uh, be careful being short, at least for the day. And I'm, you know, that's all. I'm, I'm looking at short-term patterns based on what I'm looking at. So we'll take a look. And believe me, folks. I'm bearish and I'm I'm still in. I'm short from 40 uh, from 39.52, and uh, you know I'm only in it. I've only got a three point profit in it with all this negative news. Are you kidding me? I'm f I'm frozen, scared to death. And uh, what did uh, Don uh, Adams say? 
living the dream and no living dangerously and loving it and that's what i'm doing but i gotta stop in so that's pretty much it so we're trading i believe someone just told me at 39 49 i'd like to see if you can hold 39 uh, 43 here because if we get above 39 52 i will be out and break even and say thank you very much and i'll go and count my little marbles and move on to the next one but boy my trade of the day is that Japanese yen trade if I can get that off that is just like the cattle trade and that's been a really good one we'll take a break 877-927 stay tuned for the wolftrader.com If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and I believe we have the wolf trader himself on the line, Shane Smolian. Are you there, young man? Good afternoon. Is this Duke and Duke? 100 South Broad Street, always in the same place, willing to serve. What's up today, buddy? What are you looking at? Bullish or bearish? Uh, well, I'm going to on on the S and P, uh, long term bullish for sure. Okay, but we're not going to talk about forecasting today. We're going to talk about the geomagnetic storm. I thought we would go back and do a summary and recap of this. We talked about this last year, and the reason why I think it's timely to talk about this is because there's recently two storms that came off of the sun to travel over the earth and when this occurs it affects the stock market and this is a very interesting phenomenon because we talk about different types of forecasting models I mean people have different types from cycles to Fibonacci to Lucas numbers to astrology to regular cycles 
But this is an interesting concept because it was actually recognized by the Federal Reserve. So that mm-hmm. might sound very strange to you to hear that, that the, why would the Federal Reserve be interested in, in this? Well, I think it's interesting because we're going to reference the research paper that the Federal Reserve wrote on this. And we're going to talk about how these storms affect the markets. And I'm going to show you some examples. Since last year when we talked about this, we talked about this about a year ago. It was like the end of March. There's been a couple of storms, and they have had pronounced effects on the stock market. And so I think I, I just want to cover that with everybody uh, just to give a, give a recap because there are some new listeners here. So geomagnetic storms are storms that come off of the sun, these coronal mass ejections that come off, solar flares. And they travel to the Earth. And when they travel to the Earth, they interact with the the Earth's magnetic field here. And when that happens, there are – these particles are traveling very, really, really fast. And what they do is they, they can interact with nitrogen and oxygen molecules and they release these photons of light. And this is what we know – is known as the northern lights or the aurora borealis. And so when these – the stronger these storms are, the lower – that we can see the the aurora in on the earth so usually these are up in northern canada near the north pole but they can travel down we saw one recently go down as far north as new york city last spring and and theoretically there was a storm that brought one down to the tropics one year we'll talk about that but that's very rare so here's another picture of this showing the sun (laughs) i think that's a little exaggerated but the idea is that you know our magnetic fields are, are protecting us from many many types of interference that comes off of the sun and radiation and it, it deflects these particles and that's one of the things that makes earth inhabit earth habitable versus other planets that are not habitable so just this is just a recap uh, and I just I want everybody to get, to get caught up to speed because some people heard this and some people didn't but coronal mass ejections do come off of the sun and they come off on a periodic basis so it's not necess- it's not necessarily okay. random I'm going to talk about that too uh, it takes days to arrive to the Earth, but it can be as quick as 18 hours. So this these storms kind of blow up, and, and you have like two days, two days to, to get ready for it. Uh, the one that happened this week, it happened really quickly. It happened just like two days, like less than two days, and it was here on Monday. Uh, so this is just a disturbance in the Earth's geomagnetosphere. And so this is an exchange of energy from what's called the solar wind to Earth. And so these can be sustained at high speeds up to 1,000 kilometers per second. So just to put that in perspective, that's 2.2 million miles per hour. These are moving very quickly. And so typically um, these are traveling much slower before the storm comes and then it shoots up and then it causes this aurora to be visible. And then it affects physical satellites too. Uh, Satellites have issues, GPS, and it affects the mental and emotional states of humans. Now, I know people out there saying, oh, my God, I can't believe this. this. There's no way that that's true. Well, There's actually documented research on this. I'll get into that. The Federal Reserve actually acknowledged this, that this is a known phenomenon that occurs when these storms come off uh, by many psychologists in the field. So because the markets are made up of people and people have emotions and they have psychology, these storms affect the market because it affects people and their decisions. So that's the main takeaway of this. The strongest geomagnetic storm uh, was – recorded was on September 2nd, 1859. So that's going back a ways. Uh, It's the largest storm ever recorded and it it produced auroras as far south as the tropics. So this went all the way down to, you know, southern Florida and the parts of the Caribbean. Uh, There was a storm on March 13th, 1989, one, just one third the size of this storm in Carrington, but it caused the Hydro-Quebec electrical grid to collapse. So this is a big concern. If we ever get a really big storm that it could just fry the electrical grids of major countries so this is something that's and it, and it will happen at some point uh statistically it's just a matter of when these are just some examples this is the extreme event in 1989 and you can see here that this is uh this is a measuring the magnetic field in terms of nano teslas and you can see when the, the, the storm comes you can see the severe disruption in terms of the, of the magnetic flux and also the solar wind gets going to really fast motions and i watch this i plot this all the time for subscribers like if there's a storm coming i show them okay here's the solar wind now and here it's coming and so we we kind of get ready for that ahead of time whenever we can now there are different types of strengths of these storms so they're not all the same so it's kind of like a in the trop if you hear like a 
like the Saffir Simpson scale for hurricanes, right? There's a category one, a category two, and they're not all the same. So not all geomagnetic storms are the same. Uh, they, they have these, these ratings like G1, G2, G3, G4, G5, and each of these is increasing in intensity, just like you would have like with a hurricane. And then there's also another scale called the KP, which is uh, and just another way to describe it. So the KP uh, correlates with this. But when you get like a G1, uh, it's, it's weak power fluctuations. Uh, migratory animals are affected. So if you have flocks of geese and birds flying, they, get, they kind of get disoriented because they rely on the magnetic field lines to travel okay. north and south. And the aurora is completely visible. Now we get to a G2, uh, you can start to see some uh, voltage alarms go off on systems. So it actually affects your, your power grid. It starts to affect what's going on. HF radio propagation can fade. And the aurora has been seen at 55 degrees of latitude. G3, uh, voltage corrections may be required. False alarms triggered. So you start to hear alarms going off. Uh, intermittent satellite navigation at low frequency uh, may occur. And this can be as, seen as low as 50 degrees. Now, this is the threshold here. G3 is what we would consider a strong storm that we can see a couple times a year. So we've seen this a couple times this year. When you start getting up into G4, G5, these are pretty rare. And these are the ones that can really cause damage, uh, widespread voltage control problems, induced pipeline currents. So when you get a magnetic flux, so when the flux of the magnetic field changes, okay, when it changes, so it's not just if there's a magnetic field, but if there's a magnet and you hold, like let's say you hold a magnet over a coil of wire and you just hold the magnet there, there's a flux. But if you move that magnet up and down, you're changing the magnetic field and it creates a flux. That flux induces a current in the wire. So when you have a flux, when the magnetic flux is changing, you get these currents that show up in, in radios and lines, and that can cause these systems to break down. And then when you get to K5, you're getting into massive, massive problems. And it can get down as low as 40 degrees latitude. So these are the ones that scientists talk about, the G5, that this is, you know, they talk about these extreme <clears throat> events like Yellowstone volcano is going to blow up one day and the Canary Islands, you know, all of these things that people talk about. This is one of them. So if we ever get a G5, it's a really severe event. Now, this is a graph of the sunspots, in the, which, are, which are the dashed lines here, versus the geomagnetic storm. So what we tend to see is that when you have a sunspot activity increasing, the geomagnetic storms start to follow after. So it's kind of a warning sign. If you start to see a lot of sunspots on the sun, you'll start to see a, these storms follow. It's a very predictable pattern. And you're talking, you're just a few months out. So if you start to see a lot of sunspots uh, within the next six, six to nine months, you, you're going to see storm activity here. So this is important because the sunspots give forecasters a way to predict when these come. Well, this is awesome, my friend. I tell you, I love this stuff. I hope the other folks do, but I sure do. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk 
free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold. Traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Okay, folks, we're back and we're chatting with Shane Smolian, the wolftrader.com. Please continue, my friend. This is really interesting to me. And I know the Fed was involved with this stuff because when I was in Chicago on the floor of the exchange, Byron Tucker was dating one of the girls at the Fed. And her job was looking at cosmic events like solar storms. This was 1982. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This, yeah. this, is, this they, is documented. I mean – I get that I'm getting this data from the Fed, by the way. This is the data that I'm giving. I'm going to give you guys. Now we're going to talk about markets now. So we've been giving the little science pre-lecture here, but let's talk about the actual markets. So this is this is something that I've gone a step beyond what the Fed did, and and I found this fascinating. Okay, so the geomagnetic storms affect the market seasonally. There's a seasonal pattern, so the Fed actually notes this. But what I notice is, is that there's an inverse correlation between the seasonal patterns and the storm frequency. What does that mean? What did I just say there? Well, here's here's a graph of what the Fed puts out with these storms. So we are in this period now. So we're into March. So look at this. We're in a peak season right now, right? And so what just happened? We just had two storms, right? And so April's still a peak. And then it starts to fall, and, and then it peaks again in October. What happens in October, Larry? <sighs> Stock market crashes, right? That's where the famous crashes happen. Ooh. So what does this have to do? Well, Let's look at the seasonal pattern. So we know that we have a seasonal pattern in the stock market. Uh, this is the Dow Jones, and typically it runs up into the new year, then it fades down into to the spring, falls into the summer, rises and then falls again into this yeah. October period. Now, what I want to do is show people there's an exact inverse correlation. So when we talk about the seasonal pattern, we talk about, well, it's the path of the sun. And then people say, oh, my God, that's astrology. I can't. Oh, my God, it's the sun. What does it have to do with trading? Well, <laughs> It might actually have to do with the sun. If we look at the sun here, you can see that as this solar activity increases, the Dow Jones drops. And as the solar activity drops, the Dow Jones goes up. It's an exact correlation. As it rises again to October, the Dow Jones falls. And as it falls here into Christmas, the Dow Jones goes up. So that's a direct correlation. So that's a st I saw that pattern. I said, wait a second. That looks just like the solar cycle, like the annual pattern. And that's exactly what it is. So that's wow. that's interesting. So the immediate effects, so these are effects that uh, they have noted in terms of stock markets. So the, the blue lines here is actually what's on, on a typical day on the stock market. And then th this red line here is the week after the storm. And the week after the storm, it tends to be weak, like the markets are weak. There's this hangover effect that happens. And so across the world, we see this. There are some exceptions, but I think they actually talked about why there's some adjustments in some of these other markets. Uh, and and it, and it really affects um, a lot of the smaller caps. Now you can see here the Nasdaq is really affected too. It drops the week after the storm. The S and P drops the week after the storm. The Amex drops the week after the storm. The New York Stock Exchange. So we saw this data last year, and I was like, okay, that's interesting. I you know I haven't really studied this too much. So we I started tracking these storms as they came up. Here's one more, by the way. This is the uh, New York Stock Exchange, Amex, Nasdaq, and so they all have negative effects following the storm. Now, the stronger the storm, the, the worse it is for the market. And, and these are micro caps, by the way. So the, so, so these are large caps here, the ones, and then the micro caps out here in the tens are 
uh, have a more severe effect. And the theory of this was they actually the Federal Reserve actually wrote this. This was really interesting that the large caps tend to be held by institutions and they're probably not going to be swayed by a storm. But the small caps tend to be held more by in individual investors, and they might be affected by the mood of this. Their moods might affect their activities. So it's really interesting. The small caps get hit a lot more by this than do the large caps. Now, there was a storm last March 31st. So this is when I started looking at this. Uh, so two storms merged on – this was last year, uh, March 28th, March 31st. The northern lights were vis visible in New York City for the first time in 40 years. That was a, So this, this storm brought it really low. So it has the depressive effect for about one one week, and it's, specul and it's speculated that it affects the moods. Now, this is where the aurora borealis came. It came all the way down to New York. You can see this. So last last spring, if you lived in New York or even Chicago, you could go out and you could see the northern lights based upon this phenomenon here. So here, this is the storm here. This is just showing you. You can see that as the storm comes, the, 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 the solar wind wow. increases, and you can see that jump in the activity here. And that's that's right. And the markets start to get depressed at that point. I've watched this on an hourly basis. They stop moving up and they get into like this funky pattern where they don't want to do anything uh, for that period. Now, if we look at the actual markets here, I have a this was this was the geomagnetic storm. This was last uh, last March. You can see that right when the storm comes, this this was a, there was a big counter trend rally. Now, we were short this whole time from last December all the way down to this October the whole time. But I, I saw this rally and this storm. This was the first time I really started observing this. The storm hits this rally, and that was the end of the rally. That was it. It literally start, marked the end of the rally. Uh, and so I started watching. And I said, "Wow, that's really wow. that's really interesting. Uh, this this might there might be something to this. And and this this seems to be in a lot of ways uh, more reliable than a lot of the astro indicators we look at. Here's another one. You can see that." Uh, this was the March 31st. You can see that right when this storm comes, uh, the, ra the the rally is rising, and that's the end of it. I mean, that's the, it, it makes this mirror move on, off this, but that that really uh, marked the end of it. And that was the like I said, that was the first time I looked at this. I said, "Wow, that's really interesting." But does this happen all the time? I mean, was this just a one-time thing, or will it happen again with the market? So fortunately, I kept tracking this as we went through time. Actually, I'll go one more here. This was this was another one here, uh, which I found interesting because this was the S and P here. Uh, you can see that the, the geomagnetic storm comes here at the top, okay, and this is the money flow. And so the money flow and the open interest were actually both dropping the whole time. So the technical indicators actually agreed that this was not a real rally the whole time that this was rallying up. So you can see that. Once this divergence starts right here, and I talk, Larry, I talk a lot about these divergences because I really believe in them, that yeah, once these divergences start, that that's where they have to go back to fulfill. Okay, so this is what happened here, and they did go back and, and fulfilled those technical indicators. But the solar storm is a really powerful tool because it, it, it gives us context to look at the whole picture, and, and, and it really fits in nicely because this tends to, to reoccur uh, over and over again. So... That was this one that we got another one here we're going to look at. What about last August? August of 2022. So this was the last major market high. And so this one was very powerful. I mean, I, so this was the second time I saw this and I looked at this and I said, oh, I said, you got to be kidding me. This isn't going to be exactly the high again. And it was. And so we saw another big counter trend rally and we stayed short the whole time on this still. Like we, we covered it out here into October. We, were, we covered somewhere around into here. The, sh the short pattern when the guilt operation was going on and all that. But before this happened, you can see there was this big, big rally and it took a long, 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 long time, right? And so the first clue that we saw was the full moon perigee, which is a very good astrological topping pattern. That is a very good pattern. And I talked about this, but here's the G3 storm right here. This was in August of 2022. That was the end of the rally. And so that, once again, it hit it right on the head. I mean, like right on the head here. And so the market starts declining into here. And uh, there was another minor storm down into here. There was a G2. And the market still kind of was, was in a funk for a while down into here. And then finally, it started to pick up off of that low. So that was another, uh, another pattern of this that showed to be true. And so wow. uh, that to, to, it's, just, it's just phenomenal. Now, let's talk about what's going on right now. Hey, we've got to take a break now. we got to pay sure. a few bills. We'll be right back, it. folks. 
The Wolf Trader himself will be right back. 877-927-6648. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, we're back, folks. We're talking with Shane Smolian, the Wolf Trader.com. Shane, you know, and I have not talked about this before. Someone said, Do you guys set this up? And no, we have not talked about these solar storms and stuff like this ever. And yet, I remember going back when I was on the floor of the exchange in 82, Byron was going with this young, uh, it was his main squeeze at the time, and she was a, a manager of data. And her job was following cosmic storms. And they looked at sunspots and all. This is the Federal Reserve. There are 200 people working in that yeah. building. No, it's real. That's we, I, I have major a, stuff. Yeah, no, I have a background in agriculture. My family does on both sides of my family uh, going into oh, citrus and I always, produce. And, I always thought you were a tomato picker. Now I understand uh, how you learned this stuff. Oranges, okay. man. Or Donald Duck oranges <laughs> and, and uh, nursery and, 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 and growing. Um, but – one of the things they used to go, there used to be this speaker that used to come and he used to go to this bank. It was a local bank and all the farmers would come in and he would talk about whether it was going to be a cold winter or not based upon the sunspot activity would affect the weather. And they would all go and watch this man speak. And he was, it was, it was very accurate. So this is yeah. something that goes, this is kind of goes back to folklore even, but we know that yeah. this is true. I mean, we, I can, we can track this on time and, and you can see here 
this is the recent storms that just are oh, that have this depressive effect right now on top of the markets. So this is something that's happening right now on us. This uh, the, these two storms we had a G two, we have a G three on top of the markets right now. So it's really kind of putting the markets in a funk right now, uh, and so they're just kind of wandering around here. And so yeah. uh, that's just something that's happening. So I just wanted to bring it to the attention of everybody uh, that that is something that it, it, it's it's a real thing. It's occurring. Uh, the Federal Reserve writes about it, and um, we're, we're tracking it. So I just wanted to bring it to your attention, and maybe people hey, found it good. interesting. Tell the folks how they can reach you, my friend. We've got just a few seconds left here. We'd like Abs to hear what uh, – Absolutely. So you can reach me at wolftraderfutures.com, Shane at wolftraderfutures.com. We have a webinar every Saturday at 8 o'clock. You can come out and join us on YouTube, and it's Wolf Trader one on YouTube. So come check us out. Thanks, buddy. Cheers, Live teachers. the dream, baby. Stay on the green side of the grass. We'll see you soon. Thanks, Larry. See, see you tomorrow, folks. May God bless. Yeah.